Welcome 40K fans to this edition of 40K in 30 Minutes. Today's contest features two of our very own Play On team members in a Gene Steeler Cult versus Shadow Spear Ultramarines Thousand Point Throwdown. TAC has brought nothing but Marines from the latest GW release, Shadow Spear. They may be Ultramarines, but are they ultra enough to take on Nick's Gene Steeler so Cult? My name is TAC. I'm one of the uh, co founding members of Play On Tabletop, and it's been Absolutely amazing putting content together for uh, everyone that's watching. Today, I am trying an army completely out of the Shadow Spear box set. Phobos Captain, Lieutenant, Librarian, three squads of Infiltrators, two Suppressor squads, two Eliminator squads, everything out of the box set, just to give it a go. Nick is playing Cult of the Rusted Claw, giving his units a little more survivability with their nomadic survivalist trait and making his Adelin Jockel bikes even more deadly. The ability to move and shoot at full ballistic skill is really solid. Uh, my name's Nicholas and I'm playing Gene Stealers today, Gene Stealer Cult specifically. I'm actually part of the Play On tabletop team. Uh, I do a lot of the shooting and editing and I've uh, been having a good time doing it. I normally play Tau, and the Gene Stealer cults work like how I wish Tau worked. They're fast moving. They move here, they move there. They can pop out of the shadows, they can jump around. Um, they've got so many nifty abilities, how they interact with each other. My Gene Stealer cults uh, are newly turned to the religion of the four-armed emperor, and they don't quite know what they're going in for. You notice I don't have any of the big aberrants or Gene Stealers or patriarchs, uh, because these guys haven't seen any of those guys, and so they're in for a rude awakening when they find out really they're just enslaved to an alien race that's gonna eat them. They are kind of the vanguards coming into the Vigilist sector, scoping things out, scouting around uh, before the main fleet arrives. Today, the Ultramarines have stumbled across a Gene Seeder cult outpost in the abandoned outskirts of a forgotten city. Our players are playing a Dawn of War deployment and the mission Beachhead from Chapter Approved 2018. This mission involves three objectives and objective scoring begins on the start of the second turn. The center objective is worth two to either player, your own zone objective is worth one, and the opponent's zone objective is valued at three points for each turn that you start in possession of it. Secondary scoring is first strike, killing a unit in the first turn and is scorable by either player, line breaker, and slay the warlord. To beat Nick, I'm going to need to learn really quickly what Phobos Marines do, uh, for one, and I'm going to need to be smart. I think I'm gonna beat Tax Army because I think my army is better than his. I have yet to lose against him. Whether I'm playing my Tau or I'm playing my Gene Steer Occult, uh, yeah, he's got an uphill battle. All right, All right let's do it. Okay. Ready? And go. Ah, six. All right, so I'm deploying, and I know that he's got a lot of fast moving things that are gonna to want to get into my face. So you know what? I'm just gonna bring the fight to him. Can you measure that I'm nine inches away from your deployment zone? Oh, just barely. So I'm gonna deploy really close to him and hopefully he's gonna pop up the right units for me to charge into. Sneaky, sneaky. There's so many snipers. I am actually really looking forward to um, seeing Phobos versus Gene Stealers. Phobos Marines have this special ability that shuts down Deep Strike. Typically with Gene Stealer Cult, you're dealing with a lot of things either popping out, kind of coming in out of Deep Strike. Unfortunately, Nick doesn't play that way, um, so I get to see if Phobos Marines can do anything else. I'm not going to state that any are in Deep Strike, or in uh, Underground. They're all going in by Cult Ambush. I have seven CP, because I spent one on an extra relic. Fancy gun on the Kelomorph, and I have the uh, plus two to wound roll sniper weapon. I'm specifically trying to deploy away from my objective marker on both sides of the board to, to leave this tempting target so that hopefully he'll take the bait and come out of position so that I can shoot him. Because there's a lot of line of sight blocking terrain and I can't really see his dudes. I'm hoping he'll come forward and I can shoot him to death. The little blips you put down instead of a deployment, it can play such a number on your opponent and it can really mess with their head and it's just a lot of fun to see your opponent go, um, I don't know where you guys are. I definitely want to try to see. Really? Let's do it. Okay. Here we go. You on want a six, to, I, I want roll this to happen. Right I want this to happen. Come on. It's a three. 
<laughs> okay, so I'm going first. You are going first, sir. Tax Warlord trait, one of the new Phobos traits, is Princeps of Deceit. This allows him to redeploy up to three units and he is pressed even harder into Nick's zone and hidden his librarian behind the other infiltrator squad. Messing with Nick a little bit. I'm not sure how effective it's gonna be, but it's still nice to see some gamesmanship going on before these two friends even roll dice. Let's do this. Reveal. Reveal! Give me some Ha ha, we're here! Uh, your snipers are way back there. Well, guess what? There's a sniper right here. There is another sniper. And I think this is exactly what Tack was hoping for. A big castle that he can charge into and tie up. Decker, 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 decker. So Nick just uh, popped everything out of cold ambush. So he deployed everything to the side, which is exactly what I wanted, because I knew that I could get maybe one squad of Phobos in there and just tie up a lot of things. When this guy sets down, he's gonna declare a target um, on the board that I reroll ones to wound against. Is this a one of the Phobos units? Yes. Against that guy. And then when he deploys, he can fire. Yep. Or move. And it hits. Yep. Plus two to wound, okay. strength four. So when you're on that, uh, I rolled a three, so that's not a save. Uh, so a D3 damage. Three damage, uh, there you go, he's dead. We're going into psychic, yep. because you're finally done all of your shenanigans, right? Yeah, there are no shenanigans <laughs> here. So the first thing I'm doing is gonna cast uh, Shrouding. Pack has cast Shrouding, one of the new Phobos Librarian powers on his Eliminators on his right flank. Now that's gonna keep them from being targeted unless they're the nearest unit to the firing unit. That's gonna make only Nix, Leem, and Russ able to shoot at them, not the most optimal target, as their camo cloaks will give them plus two to their cover save and make that battle cannon effectively zero AP against them. I really need to make sure that my snipers stay alive. Nick has a lot of characters and I need to take those characters out. These snipers are gonna sh shoot into your Primus. These ones here? Yep, they do not need line of sight. That's right. But now they're minus one hit? Uh, now they are plus two to hit. I'll burn uh, Sans and Gilliman on them. Uh, so that is one command point, and now they get to reroll ones. So uh, rerolling the one, I'll hit. Uh, wounding on three. All wound, AP minus one, no cover save. All right, AP minus one, so they're normally a five, goes to a six, however, it's AP minus one, and my spit cult rule gives me plus one if it's a zero or minus one AP weapon, so it goes back to a five. So three on fives. So, pass one, fail two. Uh, my suppressor squad is gonna fire into your mortar squad. How, uh, what's the range of them again? 48. Hitting on threes because I did not move. Yep. Rerolling the one. Uh, so two misses, uh, four hits, wounding on threes, uh, three, AP minus two. So on sixes then. Nothing, all three go through. Okay, that's two wins each. Two wins each, oh, they're all dead. Boom, boom, boom! First strike for you! Um, this from this squad. Plus, and minus one! Ha ha ha! Bring it! Uh, these are automatic wounds because rolls of a six automatically cause a wound. Copy. Uh, and then these are wounding on fours. Uh, so one more, so four saves, no uh, AP. Okay, so that means I am now on a four up because of Rusty Claw. Ah! Ooh. Every single one fails! Do I want all of that Overwatch? It looks like Tack is considering what to charge here for quite a while. I, you know, I know it's a lot of Overwatch and Nick has a nearby counter unit, but he may be served by weathering that shooting and charging all of it just to get in his licks first. Primaris Marines in combat are dead hard, and I think he could really put Nick on the back foot quickly. So in need an charge. That's a, uh, well, come on, probably roll this one. Enough. Nope. I make it with a nine. Ah, come on in, come on in. And now I'm in, and yes, it puts my Phobos Marines in a real dangerous spot. However, I really wanted to tie up those bikes. Uh, they're not able to shoot anymore because they cannot fall back and shoot. Um, I've done exactly what I want to do, which is keep his bikes in his corner. Well, that kind of sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to not be in combat there. With no wounds taken in combat in retaliation, Tack has scored that all-important first strike this turn, giving him a point. Uh, the Jackals are gonna fall back. Nick's movement phase, and he's gotta be a little bit frustrated. Um, not only has Tack got off the first turn assault, but he's hit his other units very well, and he's minimized the amount of shooting that, uh, that Nick's gonna be able to put back in return. No, oh, I don't think I can see him. <laughs> 
I don't think I can see him. Well, that's wasteful. Okay, Brood Brother, uh, Brood Brother's infantry squad is gonna advance six inches. Woohoo! Where are they going? Why are they going over there? Because it gives us points. Keller Morph, because he doesn't have another target, is gonna fire at this one pitiful little dude. Yep. He has the relic gun, which gives him three shots, and two other guns, which give him two shots each. If any of these hit, he get, generates another shot. Yep. Five, five minus one. Uh, so three up. Uh, he says, ha, oh, brutal. Nick's shooting phase, and he doesn't have a lot of targets, so he's managed to put some wounds on those guys in the middle there, but he's more focused on his assault phase here and, uh, and how this is gonna turn out. Charge! Oh, in? yeah, we're in. Killer Morph. You know what, it's a 12-inch charge, I'm gonna try for it. Go for it. Can I get an 11? Wow, all right, come on, Kazane. Dun-dun-dun-dun-dun! I'm not worried at all at this point. Um, he's barely done any damage, and I've got all my heavy hitters with their giant rock saws, and they're gonna come in, and they're gonna slice their heads off. I'm gonna declare a charge with these guys into here. Sure. Um, let's see if I make it in. <gasps> what look at Just barely. Oh yeah, this is what Nick was after. That squad of Acolyte hybrids are toting rock saws. It doubles the unit strength, it's AP4, and does a flat two damage with no penalty to hit. Man, oh man, that is bonkers good. And there it is. Tack did shut down some shooting this turn, but it cost him that forward unit. Nick has scored first strike on the counter charge with his Acolyte hybrids, and we go into turn two with our score tied at one apiece. I wonder how Tack feels about the loss of those Marines. He's very model count low in this army, and a war of attrition is not something that I think he can win. I'm moving myself around, and I've realized that I've put myself in a bit of a bind. I do not have enough chaff and or supporting units. I'm going to guess that I'm going to lose that middle objective, and so the only choice I think I have left is to castle up uh, make my shooting as effective as possible and basically kill anything that comes onto that middle objective. In comes the lieutenant and he seems to be angling to charge that tank to shut it down. My librarian will try to smite, uh, that's a five, so that goes off. And that's two uh, mortal wounds. Two mortal wounds, all right. So two guys are gonna try to jump in front of that. And one does and dies, the other one does not and so he dies because he only had one move left. So it, Actually, I'm gonna command point reroll that because I still have still command points that I have not used. And that's a fail. Temporal corridor. I need a six for this to go off. Uh, that's a five, so I will command point reroll this dice. So I'm down to four command points, but temporal corridor does go off, so it gets to move plus advance. Three, uh, three dice, pick the highest. I know. I know that he really wants to hunt my librarian with his psycho, with his uh, snipers, and I wasn't gonna let that happen. Well, that sucks. I really want to shoot my anti-psyker sniper at him. I am going to use the other profile because that seems fun. Uh, so these two, who have line of sight on this unit, okay. are gonna do the hyperfrag. And then the one guy that has the one shot on him will do the uh, yeah. the bigger weapon. All right. The hyperfrags are D3 shots each. Okay, so one, one shot each. <laughs> Hitting on threes, re-rolling ones because of the captain, both hits. Uh, wounding on threes, <laughs> nothing. All right. Okay, snipers. snipers. Snipers, do me proud. All right, this, this guy's gonna do me proud though. He's gonna try. Nope, he's not gonna do you proud at all. Cocked? <laughs> That's gotta be cocked. Yeah, like, it's cocked. Hits, there you go. And wounds. So on a six, here we go. Nope. Uh, D3. D3, oh, don't kill him, please. Yes, he's dead! Ah! All right. Tack's taking a long time deciding targets here in his second shooting phase, and, and these suppressors have a lot of high strength guns, but low toughness targets in this match. As expected, the lieutenant has charged into the tank to keep it from firing. It's a bit of a knight canceling a rook, if you will. However, if that Lehman Rust gets clear shots, it could start to do some serious damage to Tack's army. That's a four, so we're off to a good start. Off to a great start, I'm liking four. And I'm, oh, yes. that does it. So no, uh, Tack really didn't wound it, but Back the tank gets to hit back on sixes, and it's actually managed to hit. 
Nick rolls to wound. He needs a two. <laughs> it's a and he gets a one. Uh, strength eight. I'm gonna re-roll the command point. Why not? Oh, command point re-roll and another one. The tank I manages to get a six to hit him in close combat. I try to run him over, and I roll a one. It always happens. Start of the second turn for Nick here, and he's actually scored three points. He holds his own objective, and he holds the center objective, and that one's worth two. Falling back. <laughs> Okay, these guys are gonna move. 23 inches. I'm gonna be right in here. We're out of range! All these guys are useless here. These guys are useless here. And in my movement phase, um, these guys are gonna go back into shadows for one CP. He's chosen to redeploy a unit back into the shadows, another Gene Stealer called Stratagem, and he effectively getting to deep strike them later in the game. And I think he's trying to set up a late break into Tax Castle. He's gonna clear a target. He's gonna clear these guys, plus one to hit. This one into there. Uh, mining Laser gets two shots. Uh, no rerolls, no hits. Man, that was not a great shooting phase for Nick. Bit of a whiff, really, but you know, he's gaining a lot of board control here, and I think that is gonna serve him much better than plinking out a few units in the shooting phase. So, five ups, right? Yep. Oh, oh come ball. on! Six inch, so five, five inch charge. I'm in, yep. five, six, seven. Nick has wisely fallen back with his tank, and look at this. Tack didn't see those guys. Nick has countercharged with his own unit and tied up Lieutenant. How's that feel, Tack? Nicely played, Nick. Uh, I rolled one uh, fail, so down to three. So hitting you back, um, any sixes results in two hits, not one. Uh, I rolled two sixes, <laughs> so they become two more hits. Five saves. So that's on fours, so two saves, three dead dudes. Going into turn three, we have a score of Nick four and Tack two. He needs to keep Nick off of that middle objective before he runs away with the score. My outlying units, I know, are in a lot of trouble. My lieutenant is going to get punched hard by that tank. Going into shooting now, these eliminators, two of them have line of sight, one of them does not. Right. Uh, cool. Both hit. Yeah. Uh, wounding on threes. Ah. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right. I am starting to learn a little bit more about these focus Marines and what they do. I'm learning about these suppressors and I'm learning about the eliminators. I am learning very quickly that those snipers are not the best snipers in the game. Okay. Uh, these uh, suppressors are going to go into the bikes. Okay. Minus one hit. Uh, all three hits. Uh, two wounds. AP two. AP two. Oh, it just goes right through. Two wounds each. Two wounds each. Woo! Um, they're dead. Lots of fallbacks and repositions here for Nick, too. It looks like he's setting up to feed that lieutenant some battle cannon rounds. If I can keep um, that lieutenant off the objective in the back, I can hold on. Uh, movement phase done. And in movement phase, these guys are gonna pop in. Okay, who last, who's left that does the 12 inch bubble thing? That and that. That and that. Not these guys? Nope. Then let's kill those guys. Then I'm gonna start with Sniper into your dude back there. Hits on a two. <sighs> Hits on a two, okay. Command point reroll. Ah, there we go, I'll take the three. Uh, that's cocked, luckily. That's a two, no, I wanted to fail. Yeah, it's, it's cocked, it's a two. Oh, yes! Last command point. No! Yep, he saves it. Darn it. I finally positioned my sniper right in the place to shoot him in the head. I, boom, and get that dice, he fails, and then re-rolls. And there it is, he saves it. This is a moral victory, keeping my librarian alive because I know the thing that Nick wanted to do the most in this game was pop a Psyker and make me perils. This has gotta be the best round of shooting for Nick yet. His snipers are doing some serious work here. Tack has to spend a command point to save his librarian and I think that's only gonna leave him with one. Tack's lost his suppressors in the bottom left corner and he really needed them to keep the pressure up, but Nick absolutely unloaded on them this turn. 
It's a great turn of shooting, but let's see if that lieutenant can dodge these battle cannon rounds. Point blank range. Fire! <laughs> One shot. <laughs> it's a failure! <laughs> All right, well, the heavy bolters will have to kill him because that was my whole plan for dealing with that dude. Right. One hit. Wow, what happened? Except, didn't move. I get to fire his main gun twice. I get one more chance at this. It's a two! It's a little better. Hitting on fours. <laughs> oh my, he's missed. He's missed the Louis completely. Gunner, there's a Marine in front of us. Shoot him now. Oh, I can't, sir. He's too nimbly bimbly. He's just dancing around the shells. So much for a great shooting phase. I spoke too soon. Point blank shot. Point blank battle cannon to the head. Three ones in a row. Like, it's just... I... Ah! My lieutenant's dancing around bullets of fire. Round four, and, and Tack looks a little lost here. You know, he's managed another point for holding his own objective, uh, but I think his unfamiliarity with the Phobos Marines is starting to catch up with him. You know, it's hard to play on camera, and it's harder still to play with an unfamiliar army. When you add in a top-notch opponent like Nick, you've made your task almost Sisyphean. So we're getting into turn four, and it's not looking my way. Try to do smite on there. Ha 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 ha, you will do nothing. <laughs> These three snipers are gonna go, don't need line of sight here. Minus one hit, plus two, two hitting. So they go to a one up, goes back to two up. Well, that's amazing. Uh, we were on the one because of the captain. Uh, wounding on threes. <laughs> this guy might be dead. This guy would be dead if it's the other profile. Oh, I know, that's not mortals? That's not mortals, no. So it's just AP minus one, no cover. No cover, so I actually get a five. Three dice. Ha! Save two of them. Doesn't have a lot of shooting left here, and he's not killing what he needs to. I think that may have just cost him the game. I need to make a glorious 10-inch charge into him. All right, Overwatch, here it is. I'm gonna hit you on a six. Nope. 10, here's a 10, right here. Nope, not even close. <laughs> Started Nick's turn four, and it looks like he scored three more points. I think that they're gonna call it there, as Nick's numbers are gonna prove just too much for Tack. You know, his plan was solid, pin Nick in place so he can't use his mobility and then strip models away with his superior shooting, but I think Phobos Marines just don't pack enough oomph to get it done. Take nothing away from Nick, though. He outmaneuvered and pressured where he needed to in order to expose that very weakness, and he did it in a convincing fashion. Pretty much, there's nothing you can do um, <laughs> my game went wrong for taking all Shadow Spear uh, models. Don't get me wrong, the box was amazing to paint. The Marines and everything were, were really a lot of fun to paint. Um, and I really wanted to test out the new rules. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good game, man. Good game. Thanks again. Undefeated! Hey there, Play on Tabletop fans. JT with a fantastic giveaway option for you. You could win the lieutenant, the dancing lieutenant from the video you just watched. That's right, tax lieutenant that dodged battle cannon shots left, right, and center could be yours. Just leave a comment below and we'll randomly choose one of you to receive the dancing lieutenant. Thanks for watching Play on Tabletop. See you in the grim dark. Play on. So Play on for me is an awesome opportunity for uh, for a chance to make something really cool. So many of us have said, man, I've always wanted to make a cool battle report. My profession is film work. I've always wanted to spend the time uh, and spend the energy and make a really good battle report. I feel like I could finally do that with a team together that's interested in doing the same thing. And to be able to see the response of that, so cool. Being part of Play on Tabletop, to me, uh, is an opportunity in putting a really talented group of guys together to do something different. Um, with battle reports. I love this hobby. Um, I love playing, I love hobbying. Um, and I found that um, the landscape for battle reports was kind of all the same. Um, my personal background is creative direction and marketing. And I felt that, you know, getting the right group of guys together, we could make something special.